Hi guys, today I'm going to share with you my top 10,000 trails parks. Let's start with Natchez Trace RV Campground in Hohenwald, Tennessee. I really like the way this campground is laid out. Um, it's a rather large campground that's sort of layered on a hill and there's several different camping sections and each section seems to have its own personality and uh, different activities. The lowest section in the campground is the largest lake access in the park and uh, uh, there are a few sites here but they're only reserved for 50 amp service. But you know that's okay because the top section where I stayed is home to Town Hall. I believe Town Hall is about the only place you can get cell phone service in the park uh, and this is where I spent most of my time watching uh, basketball when I was here. This is an activity center complex. They have it all here. They have a dining hall downstairs with a huge deck, and they I think they have church service down there. And then uh, uh, you have this uh, lounge area, a, a game room, and a library, and even a movie theater that they open up for special showings. The clubhouse at Hidden Cove is no slouch either, and I'll take the wraparound porch for those rainy days. Hidden Cove is a small park with huge sights. I really love the simplicity of this little campground. There's a clubhouse, a pool, and Smith Lake. You certainly see a lot of fishermen and activity on the lake, but here at the campground you don't really notice a lot of people fishing or boating. I can tell you this, sometime on a rainy day the Ramblin' River Cat is going to go fishing in this indoor fishing hole. Yep, I gotta fish indoors just one time. But most of the time here, I just want to take in the view. And I think that's what most people here do. Yeah, pickleball. And lots of it. This was actually during the off season and uh, I can't imagine how packed they would be uh, in January, but uh, look forward to it next time. This time around, I was just sort of enjoying my cabin. With the premium Thousand Trails memberships, you get a free getaway cabin per year for one week and uh, I'm definitely going to take advantage of it. I have really enjoyed my stay here. This resort is quite massive. Some of the other activities include putt-putt golf, basketball, the game room. And of course you have the lake here where a lot of people like to go kayaking and fishing. The wildlife is abundant here. You can actually hear the alligators calling each other at dusk as well as just tons of different birds I've never heard before. Uh, and there's actually a resident falcon that comes by every afternoon uh, and the kids will throw a fish up to feed them. I'd say there's a little something for everyone here and it doesn't hurt that it's less than 10 minutes from Disney World. Right under the boat. Oh my god. Oh, I was good. I love San Diego. So much to do here. There's lots of pickleball. There's beautiful sunsets. There's lots of touristy things to do. Um, and the weather's perfect. The people are happy here. I love this city. So let's dive right into my most controversial pick, P.O. Pico. P.O. Pico is about a half hour up the hill from San Diego, and uh, it's right next to Jamul, California, where uh, there's a really nice casino. Uh, the other direction is Ote Lakes and Chula Vista, California. This is a really popular bike route, and you'll see a lot of bicyclists uh, stop here at the country store to pick up a hot dog and some Gatorade. They also sell beer. Now, P.O. Pico is a huge campground. It's actually divided in two, the upper and the lower campground. The upper campground is where you have to start, and that's partial hookups. And then later on, you can move to the lower campground, which has full hookups. This is the primary reason this campground gets a lot of mixed reviews, but I myself like this campground a lot, so I won't go into it much here. If you'd like to find out more about the sewer social, go ahead and check out my review on P.O. Pico, and it goes into it in more detail. Personally, I have nothing but fond memories here. I mean, not only because of its proximity to San Diego and the area attractions, but because of the campground itself. I mean, it's a huge campground with a ton of amenities. 
They offer quite a few activities here, and the cafe is not too bad either. You can get a humongous pancake here for a buck fifty, and they throw a nice Super Bowl party as well. <laughs> To be perfectly honest with you, the one time that I was at the Seaside Thousand Trails, I failed to take a lot of photographs of the campground. And here's the reason I was busy sightseeing. I will say this about the campground uh, it has a wonderful indoor swimming pool. So I'll say this the campground is very adequate, but it's all about the location here. It's all about the location. You're in Seaside, Oregon. Uh, be sure to visit the aquarium walk around, see the shops, wonderful spot. Just north of Seaside is Astoria where you have to, you have to see the Maritime Museum. It's one of the best museums I've ever seen. I have no excuse for not taking more photos of the campground itself, but I was busy sightseeing. My advice is just go. Okay, first thing I got to tell you about Rancho Oso is there is a little bit of a cliffhanger getting into the park. It's a one lane hairpin curve around the top of the mountain and uh, there is a mirror there, but other than that there's no visibility so you have to take it super slow. The way I understand it, there's been no major mishaps around that curve and I think it's because people take extra caution because there's no guardrail there. But then you descend into the valley and you realize it's all worth it. Welcome to Rancho Oso, where the stables are nearly as big as the campground itself. Rancho Oso has no shortage of activities. I won this trophy at the weekly rodeo, and I'm really proud of it. Not because I won the trivia question, but because when I hold it up like this, it makes me look thin. Rancho Oso has a nice general store, swimming pool, and activity center where you can watch the football games. Rancho Oso has quite a bit of history and you can still enjoy the rustic charm here at the cafe. Not only can you visit beautiful Santa Barbara, but you can also go the other direction and see the Swedish village of Solvang. Really cool stop. And you barely have to leave the campground to have a great time. Down one hill and up another and you're at a cold spring tavern. This popular music venue sits in the middle of a dense forest out in the middle of nowhere. It is a must. I mean, I don't tell people what to do, but this is a required stop when you stay in Rancho Oso. You know, it's really hard to omit any of the thousand trails in Oregon. They're all spectacular, at least to me. So I'm going to give an honorable mention to both Newport and Bend, Oregon right now. They're both great parks. But at number four, I have to give the nod to South Jetty in Florence, Oregon. Now, South Jetty is a rather small park. They have a couple of clubhouses and a nice pool, but that's not what it's really about. Um, it's about the campsites themselves. Huge sites, huge evergreen trees, beautiful, beautiful forest. Now, this is one of those thousand trails. It's actually a really nice campground and a great location. A lot of times you get one or the other. This time you get both, and it's all about natural beauty. So after you've checked out the lighthouse and the seal cave, be sure to hop in the car and just go for a ride anywhere. There's beautiful bridges and trails and beaches everywhere. The first time I went to a Palm Springs RV resort, I was sitting outside waiting to register, and I wasn't real impressed that I was looking at a storage facility next door. But you might say I changed my outlook immediately when I actually went inside. Long level sites and tall beautiful palm trees. This is a great place to ride a bicycle. But if that's not your cup of tea, there's over a dozen structured activities every single day. This is the most active park I've ever seen. There's water volleyball at least once per day, sometimes twice per day. And if you spot that perfect orange, just go up to the ranger station. They'll give you a ladder so you can pick it. But my favorite activity, pickleball. This is where I discovered pickleball. Every day at 8 a.m., I would literally walk to the courts and play till 1 p.m. every afternoon. This is a great way to lose weight if you're interested. I lost one pound per day for two weeks. I hardly ever need to leave the resort, but there's plenty of things to do in the Palm Springs area. I highly recommend the aerial tram, especially during Christmas time. 
Of course, Joshua Tree National Park is a must-see, as is the Thousand Palms Desert Oasis. So whether you stay in or go out, it's all good here at Palm Springs RV Resort, especially if you come during the cooler months. The Wachula, Florida area is all about agriculture, and as far as sightseeing and things to do in the media area, there's not a whole lot except for this little place, Pioneer Park. So if you go about 45 minutes to an hour in any direction, there's plenty to do. There's no shortage of scheduled activities here at Peace River, and a lot of them are celebrations, whether it's an ice cream social uh, to celebrate birthdays or a cookout to celebrate a holiday. It's a very festive atmosphere here. Fossil hunting is a big deal here at Peace River, and uh, people are mostly looking for the uh, shark's teeth, and there's lots of them. I found a couple dozen myself. My friend here told me not to worry about the alligators because they don't eat as much during the winter. There are two pickleball courts here, and during peak season, they start at 9 a.m. every morning. I think more than anywhere I've ever seen, I see a lot of newbies actually pick up a paddle and play for the first time. My theory is this has something to do with the courts being right next to the pool, and people just see it, and they have to try it out. The Peace River Thousand Trails is a terrific place to ride your bike or go for a hike through the jungle. It's a beautiful, beautiful campground. The festivities don't end in the daytime here at Peace River. People come here for the full camping experience, and I love the sounds and the smells of campfires throughout the campground. Before I started camping with Thousand Trails here in Florida, I, I always kind of agreed with people uh, that Florida is a great place to visit for a short period of time. Thousand Trails has changed all that for me. I, I will be here for extended periods of time. So to me, it's not even close. This is easily my favorite thousand trails. Maybe I'm just a rainforest kind of guy. I love the rainforest. In fact, I, I like coming here during rainy season. The very first time I stayed here, I instantly fell in love. I mean, the first thing you do after you check in at the Welcome Center is enjoy a six or seven minute drive through this majestic evergreen forest just to get to the campsites. And then before I even found my campsite, I found the beach trail. And off I went. I'm not even sure if I locked the doors to my truck. And you know what? The view ain't bad. The campsites here are huge and they're private. And I love that. It's like they're carved out of the forest and you hardly ever have to see your neighbor. Not all of the sites have full hookups. And that might be a problem in the summer, but usually during the winter you can find one pretty easy. Now, for those of you who are familiar with my reviews, you know I'm a very controversial critic in that I'm not very critical, I guess. There are certain things I just regard as challenges. If I don't have a perfectly level site, I level my rig. And if I don't have cell phone service, I find it. Obviously, everyone has different needs and requirements. So here's a scoop. There's no cell phone service at Pacific City Thousand Trails. It's pretty much non-existent. I have a remedy for that. Uh, just a mile down the road is the coffee shop at Cape Kiwanda where you get to enjoy this wonderful view, some great Wi-Fi, and make your phone calls. And afterwards, you can walk across the street to the Pelican and have a nice cold brew. Want more options? Well, just hop in the car and in just two minutes you can be along the Nastuka River and choose from a variety of uh, bakeries and restaurants. Pacific City is perhaps my favorite small town in the entire U.S. And on the days that I'm not up for the hustle and bustle of small town USA, I, uh, I just stay in my campground. Now I will admit I usually come during the rainy season, so I don't usually see a lot of people playing putt-putt golf or pickleball. But that doesn't matter. There's still plenty to do here. It doesn't even matter if it's raining to sit outdoors in this hot tub. But if you prefer to swim indoors, they got that too. But on rainy days, this is actually my favorite place to go right here. This is the lodge. The lodge is basically a three-story building. At the bottom you have the game room. At the very top, which is sort of like a loft, you have a, a puzzle room. And then you have the main lodge. Now this is a great place to watch basketball and football games. And on weekends they have a, a breakfast here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll work on my projects on my laptop or walk out on the deck and, and watch for whale spouts you can actually see them from the deck here. To me, the Oregon coast is absolute paradise, and these are my favorite thousand trails. I mean, uh, 
having the premium membership, I can spend a month at each park. It just bounds up and down the coast indefinitely. And uh, when I retire, that's probably what I'll be doing for a while. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my Thousand Trails Top 10. If this has been helpful to you, please do me a favor and give me a big thumbs up. That helps my channel grow. Also, subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in signing up for Thousand Trails, uh, do so at the end of this video. There's a sign up now video, and that'll get you started right away. Well, that's all I got for now. Safe travels, and I'll see you next time.